Of course. Record first. <laughs> Jasmine likes to do that. Record as <laughs> soon as she's done introducing herself, but everyone else gets to uh, <laughs> be recorded on it. Uh, just kidding. Teasing uh, Jasmine. Well, I'm Derek. I'm a I'm an attorney down here in Georgia, uh, and I've really kind of fallen in love with working on the business than rather than working in businesses and working. I like to work on law firms' businesses instead of in them, um, going through you know taking care of cases. So I, like Jasmine said, I do do a lot of a lot of my focus is on reporting, uh, whether that be advanced reporting through Excel, uh, Fusions, or uh, even up to going through and doing Domo too as well, and some work auto stuff. So if you have any anything like any questions with that, you can go through and you can um, message me afterwards. Otherwise, we are going to hop into our topic for today, which is going to go through and be our, let's see, general task management. Is that right? Yes. So managing your feed and tasks in file lines. That's going to be our big two focus points. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, go through and just shoot them at us uh, in the Q&A feature. Otherwise, we'll go through and get started. All right, so we are going to be in our sandbox, which I do apologize is a bit of a mess, but yeah. it works well for our purposes here. Uh, so I'm sure you all are aware feeds can get pretty long. They can get pretty wild, and sometimes it can be hard to go through and keep on track of them. I'll say my very first tip when it comes down to your feed is... Well, is going through and making sure you're only notifying the people that need to actually be notified. I know it's tempting to go through and if you have a task in the background that you've created. Oops. Advanced up here. We'll go to our task flow. Not immigration. Our regular sandbox. Okay, so, you know, it, you might think, it, okay, you know, it, it might be important for a bunch of people to see this uh, SOL task. However, I would say try not to go through and do that. Um, you don't want to necessarily notify all of these other roles in here. I think if you have your subscribers set up and making sure that you have people that need to be interactive with the project are subscribed, then I think generally that's that's sufficient. Uh, it's going to make things a lot easier for pe people who don't necessarily need to see the task. Uh, so I will say I generally do not use these notify roles unless absolutely necessary. And, you know, a lot of times, too, it depends on your processes yourself. Uh, some firms, they have an attorney like this task right here. They go through and they're the ones that take care of the SOL. Uh, so it's perfect for that. And then in other cases, you know, it may be you have a case manager that goes through and does it, and then the attorney reviews. And then in that scenario, I think it'd be okay to assign to the case manager or paralegal, and then go through and essentially CC the attorney on this role. I just wouldn't go through and do a ton of these. Um, if you want to select more than one, you're going to hit uh, it's command on Mac, and I believe option on Windows to go through and you can click as many as you would like. Uh, when you're trying to go through and unselect something, you're going to do the same the same way to just, you know, for me, I'm on a Mac, so I'll hold on my, my command key and then just double or click that roll again and it will deselect them. So if you have any of those, it's an easy way to go through and, and take care of them. Uh, the next big tip when it comes down to your tasks, because uh, they're going to get onto your uh, get onto your feed, is using tags. Now, I like to go through in the background in the tag manager and color coordinate all of my uh, tasks, tags as the same color uh, go through. And I like to make sure I have all of my information set up in here. I don't think this one is. Yeah. So, but another thing that I say too as well, so like I, I could color coordinate all of them as purple. Let me say that first. Uh, and then I know, hey, automatically, this is a, ta this is a, a tag that is for a task. So as you're going through and you're in some of these individual projects, you would be able to see this information. It does work really well on the feed and on your task lists. So looking at our feed first, I have these different filters on the side now. Uh, this is a newer 
update. Uh, I know when I first started, it wasn't there. Uh, but I go through and encourage you to use these to be able to take a look at your different things. Uh, have your teams go through and do them. Here, it makes it pretty easy to have tasks. I'm not for sure. I'm, I'm assuming everybody is going to this soon, Jasmine. I guess I don't know the time frame on that. Um, but there are other ways to go through and filter if you don't have this. And I think it'll be stuck with me for a while. Go through and you can click filter on the right side. And you have the same types of filters that you would see in an individual project. My favorites over here are going to be just, well, first off, the tags, because I can go through and I can look just for a tag. Make sure that you put the tag in front of it. Doesn't look like we have any. Oh, let's see. Free. Do SOL. Is that one? One we can use? Say, so, oh, that's going to remind her. So that's not going to go through and work for us. Let's try over here. Or here. For this tag, project setup, I can also just click it. And then it's going to show all of these different project setups that I have, all of my tasks. So it's an easy way to go through and make it for your, your team to be easily be able to go through and filter their tasks, especially if they're doing a bunch of different things at the same time. I know each firm is an organization is going to be different, but if you have someone that's repeating the same type of actions, whether that be drafting a certain type of letter and sending that out or setting up a claim, uh, these tags work really well because then they can just kind of do them in that mindset. I can do one after another, after another, after another, after another. But it really does depend on your firm. So before you implement something like that, encourage your team to do something like that. Just think about how you want your team members to work. And if this would actually be beneficial, because it could be it could be harmful, especially for someone who has, let's say they they have like they're a, a case manager that have too many tasks to be able to go through and or tags to be able to memorize. I generally that's not a huge concern, and I would say too, you make sure you just have those tags organized. And I will say too, uh, I always say that if it's not color coded or co color coordinated. It's not, and it doesn't have uh, the description, then it's not approved by the firm, so don't use it. That's generally what I go through and say. And that can help keep things cleaner for you and make sure that we're all using the same tag and people aren't, or people aren't using other variations in the tag. All just depends on where you are in your file line journey and what your tag system looks like. Uh, but color coordinate those because I think, I know it's a little off topic, but it does play into our feed and our tasks. And I think it's, I think it is generally pretty helpful. So we can click on the tags there and be able to see them. And it just automatically applies it right up here. And then we can do, well, we can do for uh, on or before today, next 30 days, next seven days. There's not a way to make this sticky. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. But I think the filter for the tags will be very, very helpful. Uh, also, part of having the feed is going through and managing the feed. So here, you know, I have a lot of reminders. Let me remove my tags. I have that filter for reminders there. And then I can easily just walk through them. And for some of these, I know since this is our test environment, I can just easily just click them off to go through and clear them. This archive button will just go through and take it off your feed. It won't actually remove it from our project. So you don't have to worry about that. And you can still view any of the items that you've said got it to under recent. So they'll still be easily accessible without you having to go to each individual project as well. If you'd like, you can view them there. Um, the unread just makes it so that the stuff that you actually need to get done is a little bit more at the forefront um, and easier for you to kind of manage and view. And it looks like recent as well, because I just created this testing project earlier. And so our first project setup task appeared. So it, it is calling it recent because it's been recently assigned to me. So you can use it for that way too as well. Cool. Okay. So the, your task manager is going to basically be the same. You know, you have some other filters that you can use. I think tags works the best here for tasks because it's it's not going to have as many filters as our feed does. And I always suggest going through and working on both your feed and your task list at the same time. 
just to make sure that everything gets taken care of. You could go for one and then hop over to the other. Otherwise, I've I've seen I've seen instances where an individual will go through and they'll work on one and not the other, and they'll end up missing important things. You know, the feed's going to have a bun bunch of random information for us as things are posted to each of these projects, which is absolutely great, but it could be some clutter. So someone who goes through and just works on task isn't going to get all that other information. And it's possible, too, that they may accidentally clear something from their feed and not see it on their task flow. So just keep that in mind. One thing about the feed that um, I don't think we had a chance to touch on, and I'm not sure if many people utilize or know, but the first two items that we have on there are pinned um, to our feed. You'll see the designation in the top right-hand corner in that yellow. Every user has the opportunity or option to pin items to their feed. These are things that you want to see, you know, obviously at the top, no matter how late um, they came in. So we have one pinned here from 2023. Um, so you just killed it. <laughs> it's <all> good. <laughs> um, so these items, and you can do this with kind of any item, um, as you see, pin to my feed brings it to the top. Those three lot or three dots on the right hand corner are going to get you the same actionable items that you see at the bottom for you to be able to pin to your feed. Only you're going to be able to see the items that you've pinned to the top. So don't worry about other people's visibility there. That's just for you. And again, in your working, um, kind of whatever works best for you there. Which you can, of course, well, I should say project admins can, well, I might freak it out on me thing. Project admins can go through and they can pin it to their own feed or pin it, pin it to feed, pin it to project. If you're not a project admin, you can just pin it to your feed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, I think pinned items are, I love pin items personally, because it's just, they're, they're right up there. Uh, I would just say also encourage team members that if you have people that pin things, make sure that they remove old pins uh, if they're no longer uh, needed. Because I've seen some where you have to scroll down and that that's not going to be best practice for it. You want to be able to immediately see the important things there. Everything else, uh, you know, go through and scroll it. You can also, of course, search on the bottom left corner, search within the project. You can pick options and let's say you want to ser search for just notes. I can go through and I can just double click my notes here and then I can search for whatever I need to. Yep, so you can see from file setup to treatment, like those go through and appear in there. Um, you can see all of those different things just based off this word set. Those are notes, and I can go through and do tasks as well, or I could do more than one thing. And just a quick tip, too, if you're really looking for something, open your links in, in a new tab. Otherwise, it just refreshes the tab you're on, which gets super annoying if you need to do the same search again. Cool. So I want to take a look at, and at, well, I guess those are the tips to be able to go through and use both of those. But I want to take more of a look at our advanced and our task flow. So pull up, well, do the personal injury one. Okay, so of course we can have tasks come through a couple different things, uh, you know, phases or action buttons, or if you have some sort of automation, tasks can go through and be created. Uh, and you can see that we have, you know, our tags here. We are able to go through and format the text uh, like you'd be able to based on Filevine's guidance page, which I can go through and I can get you a link for that too. And then you can see on the right side, we have a couple different designators here. This one, this the two arrows, 30, that just means it's going to repeat every 30 days. Now you can have it decide to only repeat when it's still in that particular phase or all the time. I will say with all the time that it won't die. It'll just keep going through and refreshing. And so you'll have to clear that feed item, like um, clear assignee 
to be able to actually go through and get it to stop generating. So that could be anno could be pretty annoying. I generally like to go through and keep these things on. Otherwise, you could have a bunch of tasks just build up in the background that no one's really paying attention to, which isn't great for any of us. Uh, so I say generally, if you can use this, go through and do that. And you can notice too, with most of our dates, that they are not set to zero. Uh, I will say at a firm that I was at once upon a time, I, there were some pretty strict time frames with getting certain tasks completed within 24 hours and then being assigned. And I realized that a lot of my team members were having task paralysis because every time a project would move to a specific phase, they'd get eight different tasks. And so they'd be working on their feed and it would be, you know, a um, hundred items on their feed and then it would be 108 items, 116, especially, you know, because they were, these were all, um, it was a personal injury firm and they were all going to demand out. So think about that too as well. Don't overwhelm, overwhelm your team because if they're overwhelmed, then honestly, when it comes down to your tasks, then they're not going to be done the way that you want them to be. Uh, I call it task paralysis. I don't know if anyone has a better term for it, but I know when something like that happens, when you get a bunch of things to do at the same time, it can easily feel overwhelmed. Uh, so take care of your team so that they can go through and take care of the clients and uh, or your customers. So I would suggest maybe having one or even potentially having a, an item that says um, mark as complete when ready to complete. Um, oops, can't spell. You can take. Intake is probably not the best example for this. And I'm going to have it as a phase change. Uh, and then I'm going to have this one task and have all my others be based off of that first one. Uh, this can help with that because then you have team members who feel more in control because now they can go through and say, all right, let me start my process. They mark it done. And then it can build out all the tasks out from under there. So that at least they're prepared to see all of those tasks and things generate on uh, both their feed and their task flow or not their task flow, their tasks page. I went ahead and added that support article for the formatting um, that we've seen Thank you. kind of our tasks here as well for you. Yes, the now uh, our tags get automatically updated, but I mean, I use a lot of the, uh, the back tick where it turns into like, where it turns into purple text. I use that one a lot, a lot of hyperlinks, things like that. Um, one thing, too, if you do need someone to go through and do something on a specific section, you could add a hyperlink to these. Uh, let's see. Let me go to back to my test one so that there might be one in treatment. Oh, do we have a link one? I think we do. OK, that's that is a link. OK, so let me get to my. Thanks, Jasmine. Mm hmm. I'm gonna come here and I am just no, no, not money penny, because that's that one's a disaster. Uh let's flip this to treatment. And when does this all appear? Immediately. Um, oh wait. Okay, perfect. So here, this is a link. I can click on it and it will push me to that page. Or I can just right click it and open it in a new tab. Uh, I personally just like to open a new tab because I think it's just a little bit faster. Otherwise, then I have to come back to my other page to go through and mark the item as done. Nope, sorry, Kayla. You're going to get that notification. Uh, and so it's pretty easy how to do it. Uh, this is just, this is your link field. And then this is the actual URL that you want to link it to. Uh, You'll know we use, oh, sorry, sorry. Jasmine. I was just going to say, you'll notice that that URL has a replacement field in it, that um, squiggly bracket um, that says ID in it. That is how you're able to go to the med section for the current project that you're in, as opposed to the project that you copied that link from. Um, so you'll just want to keep that in mind if you are going to be using any of those link fields, whether it's here or in customs editor, that you do need to make an adjustment to where that project ID you usually shows up. Yep. And you can click here on this question mark as well. 
and it's going to show you any replacement fields that you need. You just can click on it. It can open up there and it will tell you what you're looking for. Our sandbox may not load because we have like 50 okay. templates in there. Okay, cool. It's, it's starting to go. Uh, so yeah, you can see the different replacement fields that you can go through and you can use. So uh, I have created task flow buttons that say, please request medical records from, and then I did provider full name. Uh, so then when you do something like that, they can click on it. It gets pushed or it gets pushed to the task from like a button. And then they can go through and from that task itself, click on it and see, or even just look, read it and see, okay, this is who I need to go through and request bills or whatever it may be from uh, or reach out to. And then that way, as well as if you, let's say that you have, uh, I guess for me, and a lot of, so I'm so sorry, a lot of my, information will just be personally based. Uh, but I had team members that would reach out to the same organization. Maybe they'd have like 30 different clients that they would have to go through and check in on. This way they could just pull up an easy list because they can even run a report on it. Uh, going through and saying, I need, I want a task that contains the text of so-and-so's name. And then they can get their full list and be able to be like, okay, I have these 30 clients that I need to be updated. So really can go through and increase your Create or bleh, improve your efficiency. Uh, again, though, just depends how your firm kind of function. Sorry for that, y'all. I've had a cold recently, and it has been quite the struggle to get better. Or it's just me being a baby. <laughs> Whichever. It's it's that time of year. Um, there is a question. We use the oh. create blank days after phase changes for auto tasks. Pros, teams, um, team doesn't get overwhelmed with tasks at creation of phase. Cons cannot mark complete until it's created. Is there a better approach? Uh, I think, I think potentially what you could go through and do and is something kind of like that, mark this task complete when you're ready to work on it. Then as a, as an administra administrator, you could go through and be able to see that there are you'd be able to easily tell whether or not they've started on their task or not based on whether or not they've actually completed it so then you would actually you would be able to say probably even track you know this is when they marked this first task done and this is when they marked this other task done so therefore this is how long it took for it uh, especially if you're doing some advanced reporting for it um i would say something like that would be the best way have one task automatically create and then have subsequent tasks be just kind of listed under there. So back with our file setup, mark your complete when you're ready to complete intake, I can report on this to see where team members are at. And then the team member would also be able to see, okay, these are all the things that I heard. I need to start this process, assuming that they already know mostly what it is. And then have just all of my other um, tasks Kind of like how this says that when another auto task is completed, start when uh, the at SOL and case summary is complete. Do the same time sort of thing uh, with it being from mark is complete when you're ready to complete this portion. Uh, I've I've heard of some successful stories of that to firms in the past uh, that kind of face the same issue where it's just it's, it's too many tasks at one time because there are a lot of things to do you know in your projects. Uh, but having too many of them can kind of hurt morale too. Uh, I I know plenty of people that said I got my task cleared and then it got up to 50 items um, within the next like 30 minutes, which was not great for the team member that was going through and working it. Uh, she was very, very over it at that point. So maybe something like that would work for you. And you can also like condense them down, right? If you're like, add SOL to case summary and update the contact card, I can easily, when I'm updating the contact card in the case summary, I can easily go in and also add that SOL date. That can help limit the number of tasks. You're still getting the number of things done that you're wanting, but just the notifications or the number of tasks can be kind of shrunk there um, as well. So, and another, another thing that you can go through and do, I think we have it here in our settlements. Let me double check. 
have a checklist. You can build a checklist somewhere too. It's just a multi-select list. Uh, and I will say there are a lot of companies, firms that want to have a have a yes, no that says, you know, is this checklist complete? Yes, no. And then have a required field for their contact card to say like, I attest that I did this. Uh, but you can always just have one tra one task direct you over to a checklist like this. Then they can go through and they can work on it how they want. You're not going to have as great of reporting with it, but I've seen this work to help firms be successful because otherwise, kind of like Jasmine says, you can go through and put things together in one task, but you can only do that for so much because you don't want to do, you know, eight different topics in one task. It's, you know, generally you could do one, two, three, um, especially when they're very interrelated. Uh, so if it's if you have a task that says add date of birth to, con to contact card and then add spouse to contact card and add, you know, all of these things to the contact card, you could replace it with just update contact card too. So think about those tasks. Um, I don't try to get too wild within one task. Otherwise, you're going to run into the issues of team members being like, well, I created or I completed this one, but I haven't been able to get to this or this this one yet. It'll be like next week. Um, I say if that's something that's a common scenario, then I wouldn't try and approach it that way. But you could do something very much like this, just a multi-select list. Uh, and then if you ever need, if you want to ever do conditional or formatting based off of these, you will just use uh, the show hide. Let me get to our just any template, really. Um, okay, so, you know, we have, oh, let's do a, this doesn't necessarily matter, it can be any of these. When it's right here versus show and hide, you can say show when, oh, I'm, I do need to go to it. <laughs> Dang it, because I thought that one had one, but I do not see it there. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Nope, I want settlement. Okay, so I can so test me. Show, instead of show always, I want to show when settlement checklist, and this is the key here, contains. Uh, then I can pick whichever item. So contain notify experts to stop and send final bill. I just can highlight it, copy it, and then paste that in my contains value. And then, of course, I will always suggest when you have uh, these special rules just for your own sake, if you're an administrator, do something like this. Show in settlement checklist uh, contains like that because then I can create this and you can see uh, looking at this list I can see how what these conditional formatting things are what's going to appear what's going to hide all of that just quickly without actually having to go through and be like okay when does this one appear so just things to help you as you build things out as well I know that's totally I mean it's a different topic but it's still very similar to it um, so yeah still if you yeah, and I, I will say I use this a lot where such and such contains, and that's, I mean, I, I use a lot of those together for my checklist because you can really build things out from just one multi-select list if you do that. Do not do equals though, because it will never just equal that. It, it just won't work that way. So always do contains, and that should make things uh, easier for you. Okay, cool. All right. So let me see here. Uh, anyone have any any other questions or anything with uh, creating tasks, throwing tasks? Oh, wait, where'd that Q and A go? I don't see anything else in the uh, Q and A right now. I said there's one, but I can't see the the box anymore. It was the one that you um, answered already. Ah, gotcha. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of what else we could go through and we could really uh, touch on. I think there's, I think we covered the most important things with your feed. 
Uh, oh, in the lines of tasks, um, you know, staffing changes happen. Um, and you want to make sure that the tasks that are assigned to somebody that's no longer with the company or whatever else don't fall to the wayside, that they do get reassigned. Um, because if you just remove a user and there are tasks that are assigned to them, they essentially are not going to be reassigned to somebody else. So some of those may fall through the cracks. So you just wanna make sure that again, if that is a scenario that you find yourself in before you remove the person from FileVine, make sure that you reassign their tasks. An admin with advanced access is going to have to do that because that's where you kind of run that update and change. Um, but there's a couple of steps that you'll need to take in order to get that re reassigned. Yes, which, if it's if you're an administrator and you would want to do a one to one uh, where it's all of um, Derek has left and all of Derek's tasks are going to the lucky and wonderful Jasmine, then it's pretty easy to do if it's that cut and clear. I know most times it's not, but if it is, you can come to task utilities and then I can select the old user and then the new user. And I can assign tasks that way. And that would, that's only one small portion though of what happens when someone does leave the firm. Uh, there's a lot more to it, but that's how you would go through and you can handle the tasks. Or uh, I have in the past as an administrator, <clears throat> well, I didn't assign them to me because I didn't want my, necessarily want all of my um, licensure information all tied to it uh, because they technically weren't my responsibility. It was just an administrative thing. Um, you can assign them, you could just move them to yourself or you can have a dummy user. Uh, and I've seen that before too. So we're, you'll add a, another user in the background that the administrators or your compliance team or whatever it is, they have access to it, but no one else does. You could just move all the tasks there. And then that administrator or team of administrators can go through and decide who gets the tasks from there. Uh, because you can always just work from your task feed too to go through and reassign these, or even just add Jasmine. And just comment there, and it will automatically assign. There was a note on that other page just so that you all were able to see, um, or I guess call attention to it. If that person that you're reassigning the task to is not a part of the team, um, or not a part of the projects that these tasks are coming from. They might not ever see it until they get added. So that's where that additional layer of like, if you're going to assign it one-to-one, -one, you'll want to make sure that everywhere Derek is added as the paralegal, I get added in as the paralegal. That would require a mass update and um, also a report to be run. So there's a few steps. Um, if this is something that you all want to do and you're like, this is too complicated, we don't want to mess it up, Vine Skills is definitely here to help. We offer hourly support or optimization um, to kind of make some of these changes, make updates, make tweaks to your tasks, help you kind of clear things out, make make it easier for you all to kind of navigate um, your file Vine. Um, there is yep. another question. Is there a way to send out a checklist for a client to fill out, like a supplemental questionnaire? So... I have seen in the past where we have used guest permissions on a project. Uh, the only downfall for that is that if you have, let's say, depending on what type of firm you're at, if you have one client that has, let's say 30 different projects, uh, then that's gonna be difficult if they need to do it on each one. But I would say generally the best way to do it is go through the, team, the teams on the project itself. Do not add them in the background under setup, or you will be charged for it. Just heads up there. Uh, Filevine will go through and charge it, and we don't necessarily want that, um, especially because they're going to probably have limited access. So I can go through, and if I created a specific section that is like client questionnaire, then when you go through and invite someone, let's see here, let me invite, do, no, I'm already at Derek too. Let's do. Derek plus test. Thank you. 
find skills. Okay, invite new user. Just here, I'm going to find them to subscribe. But I can invite them. And then if we look at our members section, uh, let's see here. Oh, next page. I'm automatically a guest. Project access guest roles on the project. There aren't any. Uh, and then I can go through, decide if I want them to be subscribed or not. Most times you're probably not going to want that. Uh, have keep... them be subscribed. You can do some of those same permissions you just saw Derek give there. And then the key is really where you're going to want to go to be able to access those sections. Yep. And here now, if I have a, you know, an input or like a client, uh, status, a client satisfaction survey that I want them to fill in, fi fill out in file bind, then I can just turn on that one section. Uh, if I want them to reference something, then I would just keep the edit off. Otherwise, you can put add edit. And then generally, what this individual is going to go through and see is going to be, I believe, oops, mostly here for it. I now I'll have to look to see again to see if they've updated it, but uh, they should generally be able to see this. So try not to use any tags that are not friendly. TLC was always my favorite to use um, as a client that needed tender loving care instead of some of the other words I could have used. Uh, but that, you know, that was also for different reasons too. So I'll have to look at that. Uh, the last I knew is I could go through and I could see basically everything up here. And I wasn't able to go through and see all the vitals, but I could see all of these other things and I wasn't able to like edit phase or anything like that. But that would be one way to do it. Um, no, I have I heard. Gonna... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was so... going to also see that there is an activity feed. They won't be able to see any of the items in the activity feed unless you share it with them, but they will see that there is an activity feed. They'll see that intake section and can edit it. And then they'll also see the docs section and your document folder structure that's in there. And again, only documents that you share with them. Yeah. So they'll be able to see the shell of things. They just won't be able to see all the details. You can share a task or a note specifically with the guest user, and then it will label it here. Uh, so then you'll know too easily that the client has gone through or your client or customer does have access to this. Um, so then it's like a red flag, like also, again, it's client facing and we have to, our, our client facing communications are gonna go through and be different than her internal communications. That's just the nature of it. And uh, you can ask your client as well. Um, so if you want to like have them do something, you can task them. Um, either manually oh, or just... yeah or manually or you can even just assign two uh and Derek plus test one not yeah. Derek two that's my other one <laughs> yep uh now I have seen I have as well depending on how technical you want to go through and get I have seen automations occur uh generally through Mercado uh but also I've seen similar ones done in through Zapier as well, where essentially they create a Google form. They send that form out to the client and then they use one of those automation softwares to be able to get that information pushed into FileVine. Uh, you would just need to have access to the, well, it's no longer the API key. Uh, they are going through and they're being deprecated. So chances are you'll have to go through it and look at, um, and I don't have it here, there is access for a personal access token that you can create here in the, uh, there you go, manage my account. Oh, I see another one came in, Jasmine, I think. I don't yeah, know why gonna... it won't let me open it. <laughs> it might be on another screen or something like that or hidden behind something. Um, but when Better. a team member is out on vacation or holidays, what's the best way to manage feed? Oh, okay. So if, are, are we talking an extended leave or like a day? Probably a longer time. Yeah, like a week. Okay. 
So don't hate me. It depends. <laughs> but if let's say someone's gone for a week and they, well, when they come back, part of their you know coming back plan is just to review all of their cases. Uh, what you can do is you can just clear the feed uh, for them because they're going to be reviewing all of their projects. Assuming that's what would happen, then you can come through, just select the user. Wow, Danielle, there's a lot <laughs> of y'all. Um, and I can just click this button and it will clear the entire feed. Um, we can do it to, let's see here. You can clear mine. Oh, perfect. Well, I was just going to clear our sandbox. Because <laughs> no one really needs it, and we can see it live for it. Um, get to my feed. OK. Oops. So I can clean, clean up VineScale sandbox. Let me clear feed. And this is what it was. Right. OK. And it clears everything besides their pinned notes. So you could do it like that. Uh, it's assume, it just assuming that they're going to check on all of their projects. Maybe get them a project or a project list report, send it over to them uh, so that they can review them all. And then that way they don't have to. As long as they're going through the activity feed on all of those, um, or just reviewing the projects in general, seeing where they're at, especially if it's uh, you know like an attorney. I think the clear feed does work. Also, if you have, let's say. Well, so I didn't know much about the the feed when I first started in Filevine. So I was a subscriber on or a, um, a follower at that time at that point on like four thousand five hundred cases, and it took all of like forty minutes for me to get five thousand tasks or feed items. Uh, so if you have some that are running wild, I do recommend just using that clear feed feed to or clear feed tool, uh, clear it, and then just review the projects that they need to. Because that's really how you're going to be able to go through, you know, get any pertinent information. Um, if, another thing too, oh, sorry, Jasmine. No, I was just going to say, if that individual knows that there are tasks that need to be completed while they're gone, they should reassign those tasks to somebody that is not going to be on vacation, um, that yep. is to those projects that way the tasks still get done in a timely manner um and for that a manual switch over might be better than trying to do um kind of that back end way that we showed that way it's just the ones that are due while that person is out yep and that would i think i think that's going to work for a lot of uh, scenarios it really just depends on how your organization's set up um for and then then of course too if there's any tasks that they want to go through and they want to save just have them pinned to your feed and then they will still be there of course oops still looking at it i can go to my task list and that has been cleared all of that has been there um so you could do very well do something like that or an administrator can go through too as well and as you know potentially as they appear um you could just reassign to someone else too there's a handful of different ways to go through and do it just think about how many items we're talking about when they're gone um how long they'd be gone for if they're going to be gone for a long like a longer amount of time i would clear the feed if it's just like a day or if it's two days you could have probably someone some manpower or person power i should say going through and making sure that uh those are getting looked at you could also go through and create reports uh, that are going to show these types of items that come in on that specific person's project. I could have, hey, I want to see all of the tasks that are tasks and notes that are created on this Derek Hoffman project. And then I'm going to share it with Jasmine and the other, the four Danielle accounts that we have. Um, and then they can go through and be able to get those reports they could run them throughout that time to help cover kind of like a backup system uh when someone's out i think I've, the other sorry, I was oh, just sorry. Gonna, with within your team section you have the ability to have multiple case managers multiple attorneys if you're running into this situation frequently that might be a good use case for that also notify 
Um, because although a task is only assigned to the person who's holding that first banner, if you also notify the rest of the folks in that role, they'll get those updates. And so if you're finding that, hey, your paralegals are kind of, you know, shifts in the night passing through, um, just missing each other on vacations or things like that, also notifying will give that person an update about that task as well, and then they can manage from there. But again, you don't want to overwhelm them. So you got to figure yeah. out what works best. And if you do do reports, I would say reminders, make a report for reminders, make a report for notes and make a report for tasks. So there's a bunch of different ways to go through and do it. I would say, you know, if you're if you want to know more on it or help you set up a system, that's something we can help help you out with, too. Um, but a lot of it is just think about what do you need exactly? Do you need someone to really take things over for a uh, for a week or two days even? Or do they just need to be able to help out some? If they want to help out some, just reassign tasks. Uh, and especially here, because I can go to my task list and I can easily click open a handful of these if I want. And then I can eat, and then I can come here and I can just do uh, Danielle, six. And then I can easily just paste it right there for each in each one. And it's going to go through and update it so that it's going to be a task for Danielle. All I have to go back and do is then just hit create. And the other nice thing, um, we had those kind of filters at the top on or before today, next seven days. If you click on the um, actual blue portion, it allows you to do a date range. Um, so if you had like on or before today, or yeah, due date, you can select a date range. So if they know that they're going to be out you know, in a week or so, or in a week and a half and next seven days doesn't really capture everything. You can do a date range. Um, and all of ours are over too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, date range shelter is great. Yeah. Just get it while they're gone. And then <clears throat> those tasks, depending on, it also depends on what role it is and how fast all of your tasks generate. Uh, but you could do you could do that too. You could find some of this information here and then just get them reassigned before that person leaves. Make it part of their requirements, uh, just part of their their cleaning up project uh, before they go through and, and take some some needed time away from the office. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. So I don't see any other questions in the chat. Derek, as always, thank you so much for all of your knowledge. I do want to just remind you all that if you're wanting help or assistance with any of these things, or if you've been in Falvine for a while and you're like, I actually don't know where to start um, on getting things optimized, cleaned up, working better for our firm, feel free to reach out to us. We can um, help scope kind of what that will look like, get you into a um, plan that allows for you and your team to be able to utilize Filevine more efficiently, especially with all of the new features that they've come out with. It's a lot to keep up with and we understand that. So we're here to help in any way that we can. Um, I put my email as, we're, as well as Derek's email in the chat. So feel free to reach out to us if you do need something. I also put um, a link to some suggestions. If you all have suggestions on free help topics, we'd love to hear them. We do this for you all. So it's really great to hear your feedback on things that you all want to see. Um, and so we're more than happy to, to try to implement those. So feel free to give your suggestions there. We're here every Wednesday with a variety of topics. Um, you can find the next few weeks worth of topics on our website. Um, and then you can also kind of peruse, see additional videos that our team has worked to, to create. And also, again, see what services we offer so that we can help you um, make Filevine really work for you. Yep. Make it work for you and help you grow with it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, again, cool. thank you all so much for joining. And thank you, Derek. I hope you'll have a great rest of your day and week. See you later. Bye, y'all. Bye.